Welcome to Baki Graduate University. We've created this orientation video primarily to provide our new students and faculty with the resources they'll need to succeed. Since BGU is such a global university with students and faculty from around the world, we wanted to be able to provide easy access to tools that are essential for a great learning and teaching experience. By the way, I am Judy Melton, the Registrar for BGU and Director of the Magul Degree and institutional effectiveness, but primarily you'll want to correspond with me to discuss academic issues. I've been with BGU for almost 12 years as of this recording in 2015, and as a graduate of both a master's and doctorate from BGU, I'm very familiar with all of the resources that I'm going to introduce to you today. You can become familiar with other staff members and faculty by going to our website or the student catalog. I hope you're already familiar with BGU's website, but let's go there so you can discover more about your first portal into the world of BGU. You might want to start off by hovering your cursor over the words student. When you do this, you bring up a list that includes student resources, financial information, tuition and fees, and we also have information about each year's graduation. Let's look more closely at student resources by clicking on the words. If I haven't already done so, I will be sending you an email generated out of Populi, inviting you to create a password to access your account in Populi. This is what your login screen will look like. Be sure you write down your information so you can access the site again. If you forget, please email me and I'll send you a password reset. Once you get into Populi, this is similar to what you'll see. I've created this fake student in order to illustrate some things about Populi. The first tab you come to is the Home tab, which gives you the dashboard and to-do items. When you, click on, when you click on My Profile, you are given access to the bulletin board, your personal information, student information, registration, and your finances. Let's go into each one of these. The Information tab should have already been generated from the information you provided during your admissions process. Sally Sample doesn't have as much information in her account as you will have in yours, primarily because she's a fake person, but yours should include your age, ethnicity, similar things like that. If you hover your cursor right under the word Add and to the right of information, in this case the address, you will see appear the words Mark, Old, and Edit. If you click on one of these words, you can make changes to your information. If you click on the square to the left of your name, you can insert your photo, if it's not already there. If you click on the Student tab, you'll be able to view the courses you have taken, download an unofficial transcript or a degree audit. This is also where you can go into your class by clicking the name of the class that is shown in blue lettering. I'll show you the class as soon as we finish with this page. Let's look at a degree audit. If you click on the Degree Audit tab, the Degree Audit page shows you your degree audit, the year you started, and your concentration, if you are a specialization, if you have one. If you scroll down to the bottom of the page, you'll be able to see the courses you've completed with the core degree, specialization, and what popularly terms, quote, unused courses, which in BGU language simply means electives, so you don't need to worry. <laughs> in this case, Sally Sample hasn't taken any of her core courses, so they're not listed. If we go back up to the top of the page and click on the words Export Degree Audit, you'll pull up a version of the, the degree audit that should look something like this. You can see that Sally hasn't taken any courses in her core. She's taken one course, course within the specialization and she's taken one course as an elective. Let's go back up to the top and click the word Registration. This brings up a list of all the courses available during various terms. Since we want Sally Sample to take a class in the fall of 2015-16, I changed the term using the drop-down box to choose that term. The next class she would probably want to take is the Overture 1 class, which in the fall is being offered in Guatemala. So I'll click on the green circle with the plus in it under the column Enroll, and then click Save. That's very important. Now she's registered for the Overture, but 
Where's the information about the class? Easy. Just simply click on the name of the class that's in blue and you're taken to various tabs for the course. Although initially you're brought into the dashboard, I want you to click on the Information tab and you can see various details about the course. Required books, you'll find links to websites if that's appropriate, and if you scroll down you can actually come to a copy of the syllabus and the course information sheet. Let's take a look at the course syllabus to give you an idea of expectations you can expect as a student at BGU. The first page of each syllabus will look similar to this one with the name of the course, number of credits, etc. Because this course has both an on-site and online portion to it, the dates for each portion are listed up front. A little further down on the page, you can see the professor, and in this case, the on-site coordinator information. A little further down in the syllabus, you'll see important due dates. All courses require that students read at least 50% of the required reading before arriving the first day of class. I encourage you to do this. When I was a student, I realized that the more I read before the class, the better able I was to participate in class discussions, and even my own understanding of lectures was enhanced. This part of the syllabus also provides information about staff contacts who will be able to assist in various aspects of the course. On the next page is relatively standard language regarding the instructional methodology exists, but what will differ in each class are the desired learning outcomes. Your professor is going to grade each one of those outcomes as part of your final grade, asking, for example, did this student demonstrate in their project that they formed a community for support through their cohort experience? This question is related to the first learning outcome. So pay attention to these learning outcomes and be sure you demonstrate that you've learned them in the book reviews, journals, and your individual project. Another item that always appears in BGU syllabi are the eight perspectives of transformational leadership. We always want our students to come away from their learning experience at BGU with a greater understanding of what it means to be a transformational leader, particularly as it relates to these eight perspectives. If you feel that you want a more in-depth look at these perspectives taught by some of our best professors, take the Transformational Leadership course, also entitled Foundations of Global Urban Leadership. The guest lectures and books, most of which were written by BGU staff or graduates, provides an excellent overview of BGU's concept of transformational leadership, which is admittedly different and we think better than any others. The next section in the syllabus is addressing the expectations and assignments for the class. It will be important for you to note that you will be turning in some of your book reviews during the online portion of the class, but they still should appear in your final project as Chapter 1. Pay particular attention to the number of book reviews required written for the class. Some professors only want a few book reviews, while others will ask for a book review on all required reading which is the, uh, the case for this overture. Also note the format of the book reviews. The first paragraph should be only 100 words and just state the author's intent. The second paragraph should be larger and you should be interacting with the author's content in 300 words or less. The final paragraph incorporates one of the eight leadership perspectives, reflection and application. Also note that each of these sections also indicate the weight of each item. For example, this syllabus indicates that 25% of your grade will be from your online and on-site participation, and 20% of your grade is from your book reviews. The next section of your paper will be your journals. Please also read about the three elements that should be included in each daily or weekly entry, description, analysis, and application. You might want to consider having your final project bound after you've received your grade back, I did this with three of my courses, one of which was in Italy, another in China, and another in Scotland. I was able to include pictures of professors and guest lecturers as well as some of my course mates. This has become an invaluable recording of my learning experience. Chapter 3 of your paper will be the individual project. Your professor will have given more explicit directions about this either in the syllabus or in the online classroom. Be sure you follow instructions carefully. As I mentioned earlier, each element of your participation and writing represents a percentage of your total grade. 
This section of your syllabus should match up exactly to what will appear in the online classroom. The top grade represents what's in the syllabus, and the bottom represents what appears in Populi. These assignment groups are then broken into various individual assignments like week number one discussion, book report number one, etc. If we look at another one of Sally Sample's classes where she actually has grades, you can see that on the assignments page of the course, the assignment groups are on the top and her assignments with individual grades appears at the bottom. I went ahead and registered Sally into my Transformational Leadership course from April of 2015 so I could show you how the online classroom looks in terms of assignments. So in this slide, I checked the, t the Lessons tab and brought up all of the assignments for each week. If you click on the Discussions tab, you see all of the discussions for the various weeks. If I click on, say, Week 6 Concept Discussion, you would see an opening kind of like this one, and if you scroll down, you'll see the discussion threads where you can add a discussion or respond to another student's post. I want to emphasize at this point that BGU is a graduate school and you'll be writing graduate level papers, book reviews, online posts, etc. If you want to get an A, BGU wants to see all of your work reflect a high level of competence and an understanding of the importance of all aspects of each class you take. This includes the reading, lectures, interaction with course mates. I have graded many papers over the past few years, and one of the things that I have graded down is if a student does not include every aspect of the course in their project, including the reading materials. For example, if the student is writing on the eight perspectives of transformational leadership and are required to read ten books, yet write a project that only references one or two of those perspectives and only one or two of the books, that means they have not demonstrated that they have learned all eight of those perspectives. This brings us back to the syllabus and the grading criteria. Every syllabus includes this section, which addresses the need for theological reflection, critical thinking, contextual application, and form or technical quality in each of the areas in which you are being graded. In other words, do these elements appear in your online sharing, in your book reviews, in your journal, in the individual project? That's the best way to get an A. Let's talk about some of the resources BGU has made available to you to make your learning experience even better. You'll notice that if you click on the Library button in Populi, you gain access to BGU's online library. Jennifer Robin, I'm sorry, Jennifer Roman, our librarian, has created a video tutorial to help you navigate the online library. As you can see, there are research guides, business resources, theological resources, libraries with whom BGU has agreements, and even dissertations and theses of our alumni. Please be sure to watch Jennifer's video on how to best utilize this library. If you head back to the BGU website and click on the Student tab, the drop-down box includes a line for, called Forms and Documents. If you click on that line, you will find a variety of documents that you will need throughout your academic career. From requesting transcripts to paper templates to academic catalog, leave of absence and requests for extension. Probably the document of which I'm personally most proud is the student handbook. I won't take a lot of your time on this other than to say that if you don't know how to do something like create a table of contents or use the EndNote program, open up this handbook. It actually has links to YouTube videos that I've created to give you step-by-step -step instruction. Back to the student tab on the website, you can find the academic calendar and as you can see on this calendar, our academic year is broken up into four equal terms. The courses within each of these terms generally will begin during the first week of the term and end during the week of the final month of the term, but this can vary from year to year, so always check the registration page for exact dates. This schedule provides students with an additional few weeks at the end of the term in which to complete projects if they need an additional couple of weeks. It also allows students to take four courses per year, enabling them to complete their degree sooner if they so desire, although some even double up each term to get through the program even faster. 
This raises an issue that is one of the more frequently asked questions I receive regarding extensions and late work. It is important for both students and professors to understand BGU's policy regarding extensions. In general, students are expected to turn in their work on the date that it is due, but we understand that most, if not all, of our students have full-time employment, and occasionally a paper is going to be late. If you go back to the Student tab on the website and the Forms and Documents area, you find the Extension Request Forms. BGU does grant up to three months of extensions at $100 per month. Although the first month's extension does not incur a reduction in your grade, the second month's extension will incur a half-grade drop, and three months late will incur, incur a full gr lower grade. BGU does grant extensions without a grade or financial penalty. BGU does grant extensions without a grade or financial penalty for medical reasons or a death in the family. If there are valid circumstances that have resulted in your being unable to turn in your work before that third final month of extensions, you may request a special extension. For this, you must fill out another uh, extension request. It's called a special extension request. And it's also found in the Forms and Documents list. Another helpful resource is the Student Catalog, which can also be found on the website. I strongly urge you to read and understand this document not only for the values that are woven throughout our courses, but for the policies and resources. And the most important information you'll find in the catalog is a list of the BGU staff. So with that, I'll conclude and again welcome you to BGU, and may God continue to bless and prosper you.